This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, feline friends. This is Michelle Fern, your host on Catitude. Now, almost all of us listening have, you know, a fur babe, kitty or two or four. But what if you couldn't have a kitty? Allergies or something else, what would you do? Well, what if you could have one that was robotic that would be pretty close? I know you might be listening going, yeah, really? But my next guest is going to tell us about it. And this is really interesting and a great solution for some people. We'll be right back. Has your pet ever suffered from digestive issues, anxiety, or joint pain? We want to address these issues and more with high-grade CBD oil from Alpha, made specifically for your furry friends. Using Alaskan salmon oil as a carrier, Alpha Pet's 500 CBD oil is lab-tested for quality, consistency, and safety. Plus, we are giving Pet Life Radio listeners 25% off and free shipping with code PL25 for a limited time. So visit myalphacbd.com slash dogs now. That's myalphacbd.com forward slash dogs. Because your furry friends are family. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to introduce Patty Ron. She is the Vice President of Member Services at River Spring Health Plans. Welcome, Patty. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to hear you. Nice to see you, too. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about robotic cats. And just to clarify, you are a managed long-term care. What do you do? You don't develop the robotic cats, but you've used them and recommended them for many, many patients, right? Yes, that is correct. You know, in our managed long-term care plan, we do lots of care management and we're always looking for unique ways to provide the best services and keep our members as happy as possible living at home. And one of the things we came up with were the robotic companion pets. And we've had a lot of great success with them so far. You know, when I think of it, I mean, when I first got the information about the robotic cats, I thought, how can that be? Because I know how my cats are, and it's kind of, um, can a robotic cat really take the place of a live cat? So it's kind of a, a head spin because I'm just not sure. But then I know for people with certain ailments, you know, it makes it difficult to take care of a normal cat. How did you come up with the idea of let's find a robotic cat for solutions for people that, because you have most, your patients would be, would have like dementia or Alzheimer's? Yes, many of our, our members do have dementia or Alzheimer's or they're depressed or they're lonely or they used to take care of a, a, a pet, a dog or a cat, and they would love to still, but they're not able to for many different reasons. So when we first heard about these robotic companion pets, we're like, wow, let's check this out. And I have to tell you, from the get-go, it was really a win-win for everybody. Now you ask, can they really take the place of a live animal? Well, no, but they are the next best thing. And for many people who can no longer care for a pet because they maybe they can't walk or they can't bend down to, you know, pick up the mess or feed the cat, or they're living in a, a senior building where maybe animals aren't allowed, these robotic pets are really the next best thing. They provide great visual, auditory, and tactile stimulation. They move like the cats meow and purr and move, and the dogs bark, wag their tail, move their head. They respond to touch and movement. So they really are the next best thing to a live pet. You know, as you're talking about it, I found myself, you know, with goosebumps, and I'm thinking, you know, we take for granted when we're healthy that petting our cat, feeding our cat, that it's no big deal. But for, as you said, for a lot of people, this becomes something to where they are no longer able to 
or, you know, with um, various ailments that they might have, or like you mentioned also, living conditions. So, mm-hmm. and that how it's the next best thing. When you say they move, relate to touch and so forth, how is it, I could see someone with dementia and Alzheimer's having it be more like, for lack of a better word, believable to them, feel more real to them than someone that's just maybe can't have a, you know, cat because they're in a building that doesn't allow it. Is it the robot cat that close to a real one? Well, the cats really look very much like a real cat. And they're in, a, in the lying down position. And even some of the staff that would work with when they first see them, like, whoa, I thought that was a real cat. So they, they definitely from afar can look like a real cat. And the meow is down, the purring. I mean, they're robotic, so they're a little hard, but you can still get that, like if it's sitting in your lap, even myself, when I'm showing them to people and talking about them, I find myself just petting the cat or the pup. And it's really very relaxing and soothing for someone who may be agitated. It's very therapeutic. Now, Michelle, by no means do any of our patients, whether they have dementia or not, are, they're not under the impression that these are real. They understand that they are robotic, but they do find that they get comfort and joy from interacting. Just like, you know, people find joy interacting with different toys and games. It's therapeutic. And um, even though they know they're not real, they are getting something back. The more they touch or, let's say, pet the, the cat, it'll meow more, it'll move, it turns over a little bit so you can pet the stomach area. So they are getting something back. You know what, that's a good way that you put it, because I, you know, was wondering, I mean, I am, of course, not in the medical field. And, you know, I don't know how to mention Alzheimer's, the how it works with the nervous system and all that. And I'm glad you mentioned how, you know, they're not fooled, but they right. are getting something from it. So that's a great way to put it. And yeah, um, that tactile stimulation, just feeling the fur, the movement, uh, maybe someone who's visually impaired, they can still hear the barking, the purring, the meowing. And, you know, those who have no visual impairments can, you know, see how cute the, the animal is and, and really um, enjoy interacting with it. And many of our people do not have dementia and they're enjoying them. They may be depressed or lonely or have some anxiety. And just that repetitive motion of petting the animal really can soothe you and bring you down. When I first heard about it too, I was like, hmm, okay, I'm an animal lover. Is this really going to work? And then once I saw it and saw how people interacted, my next thought was, why didn't I think of this? It's really, really fantastic. Okay, we're going to take a short break, come back and talk a little bit more about this. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone, Michelle Fern here. I have discovered a great brand called Dr. Elsie's. They are truly focused on your cat. One of their mottos is, we've always put ourselves in our pet's paws. I just love that. And did you know the number one behavioral reason that cats are either abused, abandoned, or returned to shelters is doing their number ones and number twos outside the litter box? Yep. And let me tell you, I have been dealing with that for quite a while with one of my kitties, Charlotte. I have a multi-cat household like so many of you. And no matter what I tried, she refuses to use the litter box. And I have tried everything. Nothing worked. And then I found out about Dr. Elsie's Cat Attract. Now, most cats are not that picky, but almost every household has a Charlotte and that cat will be persnickety about using the litter box with other cats. Well, Dr. Elsie's Cat Attract is a product that helps bring cats like my persnickety Charlotte back to using the box. And Dr. Elsie's is so positive that you will love their product. They're going to offer a rebate and pay up to $20 for your first bag of any Dr. Elsie's litter. You can visit drelsies.com slash catitude and print out the rebate form or fill it out online. I will also have it on my Instagram, which is at catitude17. Give Dr. Elsie's Cat Attract Litter a shot. You will not regret it. Happy cat, mom. Happy cat. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone. We're talking with Patty Ron, and she is the vice president of member services for River Spring Health Plans. And we're talking about robotic cats and how they add a lot to life. You know, Patty, there was, I was at, we go to the Global Pet Show every year, and there is an organization called PAL, Pets Add Life. And there's been so much research done that there's been, I don't know if it's where it is in the medical field yet, but, you know, instead of writing a prescription for pills for someone who's depressed or nervous or any of those kind of, you know, mild, not off the specs, you know, those kind of things, instead of writing a prescription for a pill, write a prescription, get a dog, get a cat, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and Absolutely. Um, what we're talking about is not all that different because it's a robotic cat because it's for people that can't deal with, you know, the full taking care of responsibilities. But as you mentioned, it really adds something to their life. How have you seen, do you have any examples that you've seen in your um, services? Well, uh, yeah, we do. We have many of the, the members that are benefiting from these robotic cats. We're dealing with anxiety and depression. And we have found by giving them one of these robotic pets, the companion cat, they really have improved. Their anxiety is less, their depression is less. And like you said, we'd much rather give them an animal to help soothe them and help them with their anxiety and depression versus a pill. We have one particular member that as soon as she got the robotic cat, it was really amazing. Her daughter told us that all of a sudden she was interacting more Other activities that she used to do, she was participating in. When people came into her home now, instead of just withdrawing and being isolated, she was much more engaging, much more social. She would introduce her robotic cat, her companion pet, to visitors. And overall, her really, her quality of life really improved. And that's what's important. You know, I have to tell you, going into our interview and and this show is for me, kind of different than anything I've done before. I was thinking, you know, robotic cat, I mean, really cannot take the place of one of my cats and all that. And I thought, I don't know. But talking to you and learning more about this, I really 180 because I'm thinking, you know what, this really can be something that is very positive because there are situations where people cannot have a live animal, whether it's their home life or allergies are a big issue for a lot of people too. And Mm -hmm. um Just, I mean, there's many reasons why, but this seems like a really good, you know, solution. And like you said, they know it's not real. So you're not trying to, you're not, okay, I'm going to fool you or something. This is, this is, you have this instead, but it still gives a lot of, you know, the comfort and all that. How would, and I know you're not the, you know, manufacturer and you work for the healthcare plan, but how would someone go about getting a robotic cat for maybe an elderly parent that's in a facility? or for themselves, where would they start? Well, they could just go online and, you know, Google robotic companion pets and boom, it comes up and you can, I'm sure, have it delivered in like a day or two. Do you have any idea of the costs? Is it covered by insurance or that's just something somebody would have to look into? Or Well, for us, we cover it. Of course, it's, it's something that, that we provide. We're always doing creative, innovative things that maybe other insurance companies wouldn't cover, but it's something that enhances the quality of life of our members. We're all for it. We're always thinking out of the box. The cats are $99.99 and the dogs are one nineteen ninety nine. And they're made by Hasbro and they're called robotic companion pets. Those are the ones that we use. So wait, they're $99? Yes, the cat is 99 and the dog is 119. Okay, I didn't mention the dog too because we're catted too, but if you want to have the dog also or instead for some of my cat friends out there, dogs 119, that is really affordable. That is a, mm-hmm. I mean, that is a very, very small price to pay for, you know, making someone feel better about themselves and, and life in general. Oh, absolutely, Michelle. We have one member, actually, who was such a cat lover. She had cats about her whole life. She named her robotic cat Princess after one of her cats who passed on. And she said, I know they're not real. They can't take the place of my previous cats. But I have to tell you, it fills a void and emptiness that I've had since my cat died two years ago. And that in and of itself really says it all. 
That That's true. It certainly does. And if someone is getting a robotic cat, in your experience, for someone who um, is suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's, is there a certain way they would introduce the robotic cat to them? That's an excellent question. Yes, it's all really individualized depending on um, the person and what their needs are and why they're getting a the robotic cat. We would present it a certain way. Now, someone with dementia or Alzheimer's, we definitely would a- approach it in a different way and have the family around and maybe interact with it ourselves first and then offer it to the person with dementia and see if it's something that they're interested in and um, do it very gently. And for people with Alzheimer's, they do like that repetitive motion and, you know, that constant petting when you're petting the cat really is very soothing for them. Okay, that's good to know because there's an... Of course, for anyone who's thinking about doing this, talk to your care provider and, you know, see how you should do it because we're talking in very general terms, of course. But it just seems like such a small cost to make someone's life better. Yeah. And for upkeep, is it just batteries? It's just batteries. Four C batteries and that's it. No kitty litter, (laughs) no cat food, no mess, no fuss. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, no accidents on the floor, which... Um... <laughs> exactly. And Michelle, I didn't mention this. There's three modes for the companion pets. Off, where the cat is not moving or purring or meowing. Then there's the mute mode, which the cat will still move and purr, but no meowing. And if you have it in the on position, then it meows, purrs, and moves. This is amazing. And I, there's, for everyone listening, there's videos on YouTube and you could find out more about this. And of course, you know, as Patty mentioned, robotic companion pet, but this is just so great. I mean, if it's, the mute is nice if they're living in a assisted living where they might have a roommate. So that would be Mm -hmm. good, but it just seems like just some, I thought these, I did not do look up the cost prior to our interview. And I thought they were probably like $500 and how could, you know, might be an affordable issue for some. It's actually less costly than a life cat, you know? Exactly. A lot Mm -hmm. less. Mm -hmm. So any parting thoughts on people if they're considering this for maybe um, an elderly family member that can't take care of their cat anymore or someone that has, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's? Is there any parting words or recommendations, suggestions? Well, I would definitely talk to the person who you're thinking about the uh, companion pet for and say, listen, we know that you've loved animals or, or whatever it may be in the past. You've had your favorite cat. This is not a real cat, but you may find some therapeutic value. You may get some joy and comfort from it. Would you like to give it a try? And they could, you know, check it out. Like you said, it's not that expensive. It can be returned if it's something you're not interested in. You can look on YouTube, like you said, and also on our website, to take a look and and see somebody actually interacting with the cat and get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, and your website is? RiverspringHealthPlans.com. Okay, great. Patty, thank you so much for coming on Catitude. It's one of the things I always, I try to do is, you know, we're making animal lives better, pet parents' lives better. And this is a way, a very unique way to, well, you're still dealing with a pet, a robotic pet, but it could change maybe someone's life out there, someone that's listening and change maybe a relative's life or something and just make things just a whole lot better. So thank you so much for coming on Catitude and telling us about robotic companion pets, especially the kitties. Well, thank you so much for having me, Michelle. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Well, hey, everyone, that was some show. And You know, I've never had a show with a robotic animal, you know, robotic companion pet, robotic kitties. But think about the difference it could make in someone's life if they can't have a regular kitty to have a robotic kitty, you know? It just, you know, something little like that can make just make someone's life so much better. And um, I'd like to thank my guest, Patty Ron, um, for coming on Catitude. Thanks to my my real cat, my live cat crew, I should say, Dennis and Molly and Charlotte and Sammy and Jethro and Jazz. 
for just doing all the meowing and purring you do. <laughs> and uh, thanks to Mark Winter for making me and my guests sound great. And thanks to all of you on Catitude. I would love to know if you decide to get a robotic companion kitty for you, for someone in your family and the difference it makes. You can write me at michelle at petliferadio.com and keep listening. You never know what we're going to have on Catitude. And thank you. Thank you for making Catitude one of the most popular podcasts out there on the digital airwaves. I appreciate it so much. Have a good one. Bye. Let's Talk Pets every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com